Good evening, ITV Gold viewers. My name is Lakshmi Singh, and you are watching your favorite astrology show right here on ITV Gold every Thursday from 7.30 p.m. and live on Facebook as well. It is Himali Spiritual. Namaste, Himali Ji. How no, are you? Namaste, Namaste, Lakshmi. Thank you for having me. It's a great being here. It is always great seeing you. We missed a little last week, but we have you back here today. Now, Himali Ji, we want to talk about can spiritual powers help someone and how? It, it really can. That's a great question. First, we see astrologically what problem uh, one person can have. Then spiritualism will uh, be able to help you through mantras, through meditation, through havan, and through wearing a stone. So for example, we have people, uh, health issue, we'll say is the biggest one. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, God is, Bhagwan is in charge of giving that person life to make it longer or shorter. It is up to Bhagwan. It is not up to human. But we can do puja for health to improve your health so that the, whenever it's time for you to exit this world, you are healthy, you are okay, and you are not like suffering. So spiritualism does help. It's, it's there for not only for your health, for but any reason, problem we might have in our life that regularly we cannot take care or manage, it helps us. You know, a lot of people will ask, what is the difference between spirituality and religion? Can you explain it, it, that? It is a big, religion is something that you will pray, you will you know, follow the scriptures, you will listen to your uh, pandit, your imam, your priest, or your rabbi, your any religious leaders you will follow, you will read the truth. But spiritualism is something like you go to a doctor. Uh, regularly you will have to go to a doctor, a doctor will tell you diagnose the problem and give you the cure, the medicine or the surgery for it. Spiritualism is the same way. So for example, my child is going into a medical school mm -hmm. or going into engineering, but that child is a little bit lost, is going to go there. Now you can do a puja for this child and you can do mantras for your child so that he or she doesn't waste time or doesn't lose his path and it goes there. A lot of kids that I know and they say, you know, I wish my parents had done this, I wish they have known to do this. Uh, because there is a time in your life we all need some help, spiritual help with our health, with our wealth, with our education, with life. You know, many people will look at you, Himalaji, and say, you know, she's a great astrologer, she's a great teacher, she's a great leader, she's a great guru. How did you develop spiritual powers? <laughs> That's a good, good question. I have uh, been with my Guruji since I was uh, 24 years old, 25 years old. And I guess your, it's your duty, it's your calling you cannot choose the path, you cannot say you want to do something. You have seen people, they go as a pundit or spiritual and after a while they drop out. I think it's your, it's your destiny, you're chosen to do that. I had no intention or in plan, but as I get older, it got more and more to help people, to be there for people. I always as a child wanted to change people's life, make them happy because I was so happy. I said, I'm so happy, my guru's done so much for me, I want people to be happy. Because I went through a lot of difficulty from the time that I can remember early age of 16, 17, till I didn't find my Guruji. Even when I was with my Guru from the age of 24, he told me, you will have to do a lot of pray, a lot of puja, because just doing one time puja doesn't help. We are in the minus from our past lives that we are in this life. So you should do continue. People ask me, Himalaji, how many days shall I do the puja for? How many times? You do mm -hmm. it for life. Because we don't know what minus we are in from Bhagwan that we are came into this world that we are here to fulfill. And technically, if you think about it, our life, we should be praying and meditating most of our time in mantras and pujas because at the end of the day, when we leave this world, we take nothing with us. 
Right. And yet we are so attached to these materialistic things that we cannot let go when we are here. So if you can master that earlier and tend to pray more and enlighten yourself, but you need a guru for this. You can go up to a certain amount yourself and then you need a guru to be able to find that at the end you get moksh, you do not have to come back to this world. You know, sometimes, Himalaji, we see someone that may have had a certain lifestyle where they were not a vegetarian and maybe they drink alcohol or maybe they, they were involved in things that you wouldn't really consider very religious or very spiritual, but then they become this very religious person and, and their lifestyle changes. Can we see someone go from, you know, not necessarily the most religious lifestyle. Oh yes, definitely. You see, a person who drinks or eats meat and fish is not a bad person. Mm -hmm. I never consider that. It's a, it's sometimes someone could be vegetarian and does evil and bad things to other people. It's you as a person, just because I'm vegetarian and I don't, but who am I as a person? I have a people who doesn't believe in God and they're so good. They do so much donation, they care of they take care of elderly people, they're not rude and they, they don't do bad stuff, they don't do cunning, they live by regular good and bad. So I have seen people, one person very close to me, uh, she used to eat and meet, and one day she got up and she said, No, I don't want to. It just didn't feel like it anymore. So I feel that they got more closer to Bhagwan because as you pray. And you, and you eat meat, you yourself will feel, no, I don't feel clean, I don't feel good, I'm praying, I'm going to stay vegetarian. So as you get more yourself closer and closer to Bhagwan, you yourself get purer and purer. It's not bad why we say eating meat and fish or drinking alcohol is no good when you're praying and doing you know, spiritual work. It's because when that animal you killed, that animal, when he died, it probably was frightened and scared, and it was, it was going through its own spiritual separation from the body to its, to its soul. That negative energy is now going into you. That's why it's considered like eating anything with red meat, you know, anything which has blood you eat, because remember, the blood is what's leaving behind that is going to cause the negative energy in your body. It's as if your stomach is a graveyard. <laughs> yes. So it's like your stomach, your body is a graveyard. You're actually eating flesh and things. What, so, do, you, what do you say to people who look at astrologers on television and say, you know, that person is fake or this person is... They um, should not judge anybody mm -hmm. because you don't know. And astrologers and spiritual are too different people, some people just do astrology and they won't do any spiritual work. Like for example, I have this lady, she came and uh, she knew in her heart there was something wrong with her child. So an astrologer will be able to read the chart and the book and say, yes, this and this is, is wrong, this is that. Now she wants something done, now what do you do? So it's like you go to an internal doc, internist doctor, he will tell you, she will tell you, this is the problem, now we need surgery. So the spiritual person comes in. So the combination of the planet on the, the horoscope is really bad. So I told her what we, but thank God he's only three years old and the mother noticed these kind of behaviors. And this is true, Lakshmi, this is where you can note if your child's going to be a serial killer or what, or you know, what kind of person he or she is going to be. Your astrology book will tell you in earlier age and unfortunately I told her he's going to be a very destructive person, very cruel and he will literally enjoy seeing evil happen to people mm. and it's a deadly combination of certain planets so I told her from this age what you should do on his birthday, each birthday you should do pujas each, you should let him wear stones, you should earlier age, you should start having him doing mantras and puja. What happens, then you become a spiritual person and you lift yourself up from your astrology book. Because when you are spiritual and you've gone into spiritualism, then a sh power, a shakti of Ma Bhagwan, your guru is helping you now. Now you are not living your astrology book life, you are living above it. And that's where you, everyone should be, so that you are closer 
to spiritualism means closer to Bhagwan, closer to uh, the Shakti, the divine power of the universe. So whatever you want, when you want, you will be get. And people, sorry, they do get to that level. I have yeah. seen, and they become ungrateful. Now, when you become ungrateful, this is a very big part of spiritualism, is when you become ungrateful, then you go back down than what you were already were. Because ungratefulness, Bhagavan doesn't accept. Do you believe this mother is going to do these pujas? Sorry? Do you believe this mother is going to do these pujas? Oh, yes, pujas? she really does want to. And I'm really, really puzzled because I have to talk to my Guruji what we have to do for him. Because this is not a natural problem. Uh, sorry, this is not an unnatural problem. It's very easy to fix an unnatural problem, Lakshmi. Meaning somebody did a black magic on you, some negative spirit is on you. It's easier to fix that. But when you're born with a karma, mm. when you're born with some kind of negative energy, which already you're supposed to live, what do you do with that? That is like, you know, a, a lot of puja part. She does want to do it because his birthday is coming up. I just have to see literally what I have to do. You can't just go and do something. You have to get approval from higher, meaning from Ma. My Guruji and then Ma has to tell me what we have to do. Then we go step by step to do. So how many years of puja do you think this mom is going to I have to continue? I feel at least till he's 13 years old. But she started it early grade. And let's say he was 13, it would have been hard for us to even do Change anything. Change him at 13. Yes. So at three, it is very good at this time. We will tell her, start you know doing puja for him, his birthday, make him start doing mantra in early age. And she will also have to start donating things on his behalf. So whatever karma he was born with, negativity, he will be able you know, be forgiven. So you believe that this, he, he's born with this because something negative he did in his past life? Yes, definitely. It's very deep. And sometimes it's very, very hard to fix what we did in our past life than fix in this life. You know, some people believe in spirits, like a, a dead person can speak through someone. Yes. Talk to me about this. Do you believe in this? <laughs> yes, it is. It, it does. something that it, you I, can do or? Yes, I did have, you know, people will come in and then uh, their loved one probably, you know, died a year ago. Uh, or six months, they do come in with in the same reading. So if I'm doing a reading, I do see that dead relative just standing there, and I ask them, what do they want? They have sometimes messages. Yes, I do. When someone dies, and you're trying to, you know, get rid of their belongings, let's say, clothing or artwork or anything, jewelry. If you give someone else, let's say your mother's necklace that passed away, is that bad? No, if she wanted it or if you feel that person deserves it's not bad. No. So it's okay to it's keep okay. someone's... So for example, my mom, uh, it is very strange. Um, my mom died and uh, I got her necklace mm. and um, my sister got her earrings. Mm. So everybody got different, different things. Pieces. So it's not that. No, it's not that. Something can no carry on. Okay. And do you believe that the spirit lives in things around the home? Oh yes, definitely. Oh, definitely there are. There are good spirits and bad. When you enter into a house, somebody you feel this heaviness. Those are bad. Remember, there is more energies, more shaktis in this world than humans. You have to see if they're good or bad. Like humans, we have good or bad. It's the same way we have shaktis, which is good or bad. So tell me, how does, let's say you live in a home and you don't know anybody that died there. As far as you know, no one died there. And now all of a sudden, there's a spirit in this home. It does happen. And you don't, just because you don't know, it doesn't mean it does. Some people uh, has passed away and they probably haven't done the proper way that they're supposed mm. to do. Um, the funeral or uh, the spiritual way of doing the proper way, that person is still stuck there. 
So you might not notice it, but yes, there are some houses, unfortunately, do have people who died and they're there. Some of them are good. They don't really do anything. Yeah. Uh, they don't really, uh, they're just waiting to move on. They haven't actually moved on and they're just stuck there. And some of them are very evil. They're very bad. Uh, they don't let husband and wife be together. Some of them they just want uh, one person living there, or some of them don't want anyone living there, or some of them they disrupt the children. I have seen mostly if there is negative energy in a home, uh, the children have a lot of problem, and especially husband and wife have a lot of problem. We're learning so much information here with Himalaji from Himali Spiritual. If you guys have any questions at home, if you're watching, you can give us a call here live right now at the studio at 718-784-8555 and it's extension 108. Again, you can give us a call here at 718-784-8555 extension 108 and you will be able to ask Himalaji a question or you can visit her on 101 Avenue. Himalaji, will you tell us your phone number? At 718-887-2929. You know, we were talking about uh, spirits and people passing away. So I have a very interesting story. My tenant mother had passed away and she went, she drove, I think it was like in Georgia or something. I mean, this is a few years ago. But um, she left to go drive to the funeral, and all of a sudden my doorbell was ringing. So when I went outside, I didn't see anybody, nobody was there, thought it was very strange, came back inside, and two of my friends were actually home by me uh, visiting. And again, the doorbell started ringing again. So I opened the door, again, nobody was there the door again now again the doorbell started so I went and I actually took the doorbell off because I figured there must be some technical problems, problems happening so I went and I took it off came back into the living room we were chatting all of a sudden you're hearing a doorbell upstairs the tenant's doorbell and it was ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing like all night and so I said, I felt that this must have been my tenant's mom looking for her. And I kind of just said, listen, your daughter's not here. She went to go see you and she's not here. She's on her way and it stopped. Yes, it does. Um, you know, she probably wanted to see her daughter. She probably passed before the daughter could get there. And um, uh, you did the right thing. I did. Yeah. Okay. And they usually go, she's harmless. She probably didn't want to stay. She just wanted to know where the daughter was. So they usually want to move on. And uh, you did the right thing. You're actually saying that? I'm getting chills. Yeah, it is. I have had that. So that the read and they do come up and they... Uh, and then the speaker on my computer just started like, sounds started coming out of it. Meanwhile, there was no computer on, nothing. And at that point, my two friends left. They were like, we gotta go. There's something <laughs> wrong. We gotta go. <laughs> that probably scared them. They that said scared it. them and they left. She's uh, harmless. They usually don't. They just probably be there in this little moment and trying to get a message through, trying to say something, and then they move on. It was very odd. And after, but after that, nothing? No, she's probably moved on. She probably could only been there for a little while, so she moved on. So, I mean, people that are experiencing something like this, but let's say I experienced it just one day, but there are people who are experiencing this daily or weekly or Those, monthly. They need to go. You can't have them lingering around your home or uh, your... So what, what should they do? Should they contact you? Is there some home the, remedy? What should they do? Well, this is what the first they should do. Um, they shouldn't try to do it themselves because in case this is a negative thing, there's so many things online they say because you don't want to provoke, make their spirit get angry. Mm -hmm. uh, you can try to play some mantras. Usually they will just stay away. As you play the mantras, it's not working, then you will need to come and see me or see somebody who can go and actually remove it, not shanti them. They're two different things. Sometimes you can go and just pray and they'll be shanti. It means they're not going to 
they're just going to stay calm for two, three months to a year, and then they're going to start getting back. You need to go and have them removed. If it's a person who died and is a spirit, it will be, it will go, because it wants more shit will go. But if somebody send this to you and it's a negative energy, then it's going to be very difficult. So if you guys are trying to uh, call us here, the number is 718-784-8555, and it's extension 108. We are seeing a light come on, but there's no ring. So in case we missed your call, again, the number is 718-784-8555. Sometimes they say they don't hear to press. You might not hear any, you know, saying press an extension. Just once you get into the phone, uh, room, just press the extension, dial 108. Okay. So let's talk about if somebody's sending something to you, sending something into your home, the spirits. She, she looked at her arms, guys, as if something <laughs> just gave her a chill. How do you know, and how does it get into your home? So they will probably go to some bad spiritual person. That's where you get the name, you hear the name Obia. So those people who do bad, they, they cannot do good for you, trust me. If you want someone to do good for you, you go to them and you say, oh, I want to do something bad, can you do it? If they say yes, stay away from stay them. Away. Because they don't have nothing good to do for you. And if you go and they tell you yes, oh, no, I'm sorry, we don't do anything bad, you need to stay there. Because why? I'll tell you. You can't have two shakti, one evil and one good in the same place. So the, usually the person who does cleansing, remove negativity, that's all he, she will do. That's what I do. I don't do anything else. I told people, please, you come to me. I will remove your negativity, and then you live your natural life that you're supposed to do. I cannot do this, do that. That's up to God. Have you actually had people come to you and say, oh, yes. could you? Mo yes. Mostly people have come. They want it over. I said, no, I'm sorry. I don't do that. This lady came and she wanted me to do something so her husband can give her money. I said, no, 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 I don't do that. <laughs> I, I don't do that. If you have a negativity, I'll remove it and leave him rest. Why you love him for his money? If you love yeah. him, just love him. Or he doesn't pay any money. Then, you know, why you care? If he loves you, he has to pay you, then that's not love. Right. If somebody knows that they have obligation to pay, responsibility, responsibility yeah. and if they don't, there's a law here, you say, I'm sorry, I can't live with you anymore. I can't burden the whole response, financial responsibility. It goes 50-50. If the other person doesn't contribute, then you tell that person to leave. Right. Uh, that's the right thing to do. You don't do things to take it out of the money. It doesn't work like that. Now, can someone actually do this, though? <laughs> yes. And if you go to a person who does negativity, you can. negative ones. And yeah. you shouldn't do that because I'll tell you why. At the end of the day, you have to answer to Bhagwan because we will leave this world one day and we will have to go to Bhagwan. Yeah. And we will have a day of judgment, we call it. Judgment, right. We will have that and then you will be punished more than him not giving you $2 or $3 or $20. You'll be right. more punished. Exactly. So the best thing to do is, hey, do you cooperate? Yes, no, no, don't do anything evil. Do something good. Like, hey, my child is not passing his, educa his or her education. Do a Sraswati Puja with spiritual power so he, she can focus. Hey, I have a health issue. Remove, uh, get, uh, help, get a, do a Mahamritan Puja for your health. Every year I suggest person on their birthday, they should do a Havan. Yes. On your birthday, Always. instead of doing, you know, parties and clubbing and all that, do, you don't need to spend thousands of dollars just a couple of hundred dollars and do your birthday puja every year and you can remove all negativity into the haven, into the fire and it will give you a, f a better for your health. I have a lady, Lakshmi, she did her birthday puja in June after she did the birthday puja I told her, go to the doctors because you have something medical that is not right. You need to go to the doctors because now everything is clear. You can see with her. Mm -hmm. You won't believe she went to do the checkup and they found a little lump in her breast. And luckily, it didn't even go to her nymph node, nothing. They removed it. She's fine. She doesn't even have to do radiation, they said. It is, it is 
just there, it was probably less than one point, but it was cancerous. So she said, you know, I did the puja and I feel Bhagwan saved me. So she did her for her health. And within two weeks, it's like she found out she didn't, we don't know what made Bhagwan made her to, you know, go. The, I told her, but she didn't have to listen to me. I have people, I have told people, hey, this is not a good time. Go to the doctors, do this. People ignore, they leave. But she didn't because Bhagwan put that sense in her head to go and check it out. Yeah. So I believe everyone on their birthday, they should do at least a puja. I, I agree. I, I tend to do a birthday puja every year as well. Yes, you you should. Yeah. I do it. Right? So you know what I wanted to talk about is, let's say you have an assumption that someone is doing something bad to you, and then all of a sudden you see bad things happening to them, whether they are getting sick or... Oh, yes, it does go back. This is why I tell you. They know dies. Yes, so it does go back. Karma. If I do bad for your child, trust me, you don't have to do anything bad for my child. Somebody else will or Bhagwan will. So you always have to think, will I do that for myself? Would I want that for myself before I do for somebody else? So it's, it's very easy to be tempted and very easy to be raped. But you ask, will I do it? Will I want someone to do this to me? Will I want this happening to me? If the answer is no, then you shouldn't. But you have people do bad to you. You leave that to Bhagwan. Don't try to get yourself, okay, he, she did it, now I have to do it back. No. Leave that, leave it to Bhagwan hand, and you don't be the judge and the jury. Leave that. When Bhagwan does the justice, is bigger than you and I can do. You know, when someone's trying to attain spiritual powers, how long do you think that takes? You know, how much it, med meditation, you know, how much years of training? It, it takes a long. I've been with my Guruji for, since I was 24, and he said, I will, I will help people and I will do when I, or after I turn 40. So I will say it took a good long over a decade, almost you know two decades for me to be. And it's a constant spiritual elevation. Mm -hmm. You don't just sit there basically, you'll have to grow. And uh, those who uh, you had a, friend, a person who asked you a question earlier that you told me, yes, you have to continue mantras and there is a level of spiritualism that you go up and your chart tells you who is capable of doing who is not so would you have to be born under a certain yes star? okay shah dilip oh, speaker good night you're speaking with himali ji what is your question yeah i want to ask about my daughter that's the uh, her birth is uh, March 21st, 93, and when she going to get married? I'm sorry, March 21st, 93, 19, 1993. Oh, 93, sorry. And where was born? Where was she born? Hello? Uh, Where was she born? Uh, here in America. In New York? Patterson. I'm sorry, in New York? Patterson. Oh, Patterson, that's New Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah. It's born in Patterson, New Jersey. What would you like to ask me? What's your question? Oh, when is she going to have a marriage? When is she going to get married? So she is about 27. Now, this is the time. This year, after October, her marriage time opens up. So next year, 2021, definitely 2022, she gets married. She will get married by the, age, by the year 2022. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Well, that is going to end our show this evening. Thank you guys for calling in. Thank you for spending the time with us right here on ITV Gold. Himali Ji, thank you as always. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much. I want to pray to Ma, to Bhagwan, 
that no one should go through any kind of negativity in their life. If they do, Bhagwan has have people in this world can help you. Just seek the help so that you could be happy. And I pray to Mar and to Bhagwan for all your happiness and peace.